Ancestry.com has a brand new feature called Story Scout coming out in June. I just wanted to tell you about it and well, I've been able to play with it a little bit and I wanted to demonstrate it for you and show you a few little tricks that I discovered along the way. All right, so uh, if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Genealogy TV has a website and newsletter and a Facebook page. Links for everything are in the show notes below. I'd also like to remind you that this episode is not sponsored by anybody. So the opinions that you find here in this episode are mine and mine alone. All right, we're gonna jump over to the computer and take a look at Story Scout. Okay, so there's a new service uh, out for Ancestry.com called Story Scout. And we're going to talk about that here in a moment. Um, currently, it's for U.S. residents only. Um, at the time of this recording, it's not even released. At the time that I release this, it may not be available to everybody. But I'm just letting you know that it's coming out. It's called Story Scout. Uh, at the time that I'm also recording this, it's still in beta. Um, and so I know that they're still working on it. So the screens that you see when you first go to Story Scout might be a little bit different. So the long and the short of it is it kind of helps build the narrative of your grandparents. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump over here to my tree and we're going to uh, be adding my grandparents. And so that's Glenn, Elma, Ellsworth, and Helen. Those four people we're going to be adding into Story Scout and see what we find. So over here on Story Scout, um, it already, without even adding anybody, has a little bit of background about uh, immigrants and what's going on in the Ohio Valley and Central Appalachian Settlers, um, you may see something different. It might be just because that's part of where my tree is coming from. Also know that this is going to be in the DNA tab. Currently, I have a link straight to it, but it will be located under the DNA tab. I'm trying to get more uh, clarification from Ancestry as exactly how uh, this is coming about. I believe it is only available for uh, DNA customers. So taking a look at my grandfather, Glenn Curry Henley, uh, all we really need is the information here. Uh, he was born in 1910, Olathe, and, and died in 1994 in King County, Washington. So let's jump over here and add a grandparent. Now, a couple things that I've noticed in playing around with this, <clears throat> you, can, you could add Glenn Curry, Henley, and uh, he lived in, let's say, King County, Washington. That's Washington State. And make sure that you use the drop down um, because that's the algorithms will work better that way. Um, but if I hit go, I'm going to get a, an error message watch. See, it says, oh, you got to it's required that you pick one. Well, this is my grandfather. So one of the little things that I want to point out that drives me a little crazy is this green dot is looks like it's closer to grandmother than it is to closer to grandfather. So just be aware of what you're clicking on. That green dot belongs to grandfather. That's what I have chosen. So I hit go. And it comes up with three possibilities. Uh, for my grandfather. This happens to be him. I know that because I've done the research. So I say this is my grandparent. And now it's giving me information about an ancestor that I'm assuming is coming from the collective in, uh, DNA trees, the, the trees of other uh, DNA members. 
And so I can click through and learn a little bit more about William Clark. It says it's your fourth great grandfather, William Clark, submitted a membership application to the Sons of the American Revolution. Well, that's new information to me, and that is rather cool. I can also click through and see uh, the application. And so what it's done here is it's pulled the record from Ancestry, I believe based on the DNA connections through other DNA member trees. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way back and I'm gonna add another grandparent. So this time I'm gonna add a grandmother, Elma Marie. Her maiden name was Madsen, and she was born in Laramie, Wyoming, so let's plug that in. Albany County, Laramie, Albany County, Wyoming. And it comes up with several um, ancestors, so I need to kind of read through this carefully. This person is actually in my tree, but this was a child who died young. This is my grandmother, so I'm gonna pick that one. And in this case, it's not showing me any additional uh, information about her. It's only showing me ancestors for him. So it has not found any additional information uh, for Elma just yet. So let's move on. I'm going to add another uh, grandfather. This time it's going to be Ellsworth, Lee, Booth. And he was born in West Virginia. So if I just pick West Virginia, I don't know that it's going to come up with anything. And sure enough, it says too many possibilities. So here we're faced with two uh, opportunities. Try a different grandparent or tell us more about this one. Now, my eye typically goes to the green colorful button without reading through it carefully. I just jump to that one. But I want to actually edit this one. So I'm going to say Cable County, West Virginia. And he was born between 1900 and 1909, I believe. Let me double check that. Yep, 1902. So we're going to give it a decade. Ellsworth Lee Booth's close family members. Well, his wife's name was Helen Simmons. So I'm going to say, now this is the part that's a little confusing, so you got to pay attention. Ellsworth Lee Booth's close family members you plug a name in here and then it says family members relationship so it is my understanding that this question is regarding this field up here I'm gonna skip over the parts about where he died because he changed his name and I don't want to confuse the algorithm again the dot uh, the green dots way over here if I had picked mother this green dot looks like it's actually closer to spouse so pay attention to what you're clicking on I'm going to now say find my grandparent and there he is this spouse is actually his last spouse um, so this is him so I'm gonna pick him and now it's come up with three stories about the ancestors of my grandfather one is the World War draft registration card for Oliver Booth another is a marriage announcement for Ellsworth Lee Booth and then uh, it's uh, John Ferguson applying for the Sons let's see what that says uh, submit an application for the Sons of American Revolution okay and then it goes on to show me the record here again great information so there's a there's kind of a quick review of, of Story Scout I think it's kind of cool um, you can get some great uh, fun uh, details not only is it pulling records but it also gives you some background uh, history about what's going on in the areas it just kind of depends on your ancestors and what uh, what it's able to find and so with that I will leave you but I just wanted to uh, give you some inside scoop on ancestry story scout well, I hope that gave you some insight about Story Scout. It's a fun little tool. I got a kick out of playing with it. Um, and well, if you're interested, there are more videos on the screen for you now about Ancestry and how to use it. And well, it's time for you to go find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.